Good morning, everyone. My name is Elisa Zastopol. I'm the incident commander for County Health and Human Services, and today I'm just talking about our COVID-19 update. So as of August 26th morning at 8 a.m., we had 3,587 cases. Um, this number includes confirmed positive and presumptive. Um, 3,433 have tested positive and 37,815. Uh, the weekly percent positivity rate for prior week, well, August 22nd, was 7.9%. That's common, pretty much holding that positive rate right around. Um, we had 262 cases over that previous week. Um, and so it appears that what is happening is pretty much holding steady with cases, but we are seeing a slight increase. So, um, but the good news is we were removed from the OHA watch list, I think since the last time board session met. So that's really a, a good thing. So uh, that's my update on uh, COVID. Does anybody have any? I, I do have, and I just was looking, Ryan sent us a stats for day 33 uh, positive tests and, and you were kind of getting at it, but we saw, well, we saw one at 75 a couple of weeks ago, but mm -hmm. there were a couple of 50s now now it acts like it's going back down and more like like it isn't a good number but 30 is certainly lower seems to be the average is that what you're seeing too yeah yeah and i, and I did speak with our team about it and they they seem to think that um, we're going to continue with like our sporadic cases that we should be below 30 percent still for for last week so that and then watching news this morning they showed a statewide and I'm no statistician, but I can tell the curve seemed to be going down. Yes. Is that statewide? It is slightly dis decreasing. It is. So what's the next thing to be afraid of? Any event? Schools aren't really. Nothing changes in the near future, so that should continue to go down. They thought mask wearing might be, and I hope that's true. If we're going to have to mess with this. Yeah, I I think it's going to continue as is. Where we're going to continue to see slight increases as we see more places reopen. Okay. Mr. Chair, thank you. Um, it, I don't know if this is a place to, to bring it up. Yesterday we were looking at some stats, uh, some graphs, uh, and I see Ryan sitting here today. I don't know if this is a place to talk about some of the things we've isolated, the density of, of families, the density of where we're seeing these cases. Uh, I just want to put on the record that um, all our um, community partners, uh, people of color, partners that we've been working with every week and um, they're doing a great job trying to move forward with these testing events and we're sending this letter over to OHA and to the governor to say hey we would love to get some support so we could do these more and more of these mass testing events where people feel comfortable to come not only for the test but to get communication on how to deal with this and and uh, so that they feel better and that they feel uh, you know they, they can trust that this is not something that's gonna be an, I got you so uh, if you want to share anything about that that would be great yeah yeah we're definitely uh, really pushing to increase testing um, we do have that testing event on the 31st of August up in Woodburn um, that is at Woodburn Ambulance um, it actually already filled up so now we're moving on to September 1st and then in Salem we're gonna start doing weekly testing on the 9th so we're really trying to push for more testing and we're still trying to contract with as many partners as we can to increase testing um, and I'm even considering putting in a request to OHA to um, request more tests, just so that we have more to distribute to our partners. Yeah, let's consider it today. I, I just think we need to continue to, are those tests in Salem gonna be at the fairgrounds? Is that what the plan is or do we know? I don't know, Okay. but I can- When we get it. Yeah, yeah I can follow up with you. Well, I just want to say thank you for, um, I know Katrina's on a nice, well-deserved break, and thank you for your work and, and uh, Ryan and your whole team and, and the tireless work that's going into this to try to protect people and isolate um, situations. I love the information we've been getting, the detail of the information that really helps us isolate that. And I know our partners are appreciative of that too. Uh, these grants that are going out, these uh, community grants, that um, I think what Ryan, I think this close on the, 
the ninth or something like that we were talking about up to September 5th, yeah, it, it, these grants, and Commissioner, I don't know if, if you're aware of it, but these grants are anywhere from fifty to $200,000 that uh, our community partners can apply for to help with contact tracing, potential testing, uh, all kinds of things. So that's out there right now. Um, so I, I think as we move down the road here a month from now, in the end of September, we're going to have some uh, uh, even a, a better handle on um, how to try to prevent the spread and, and uh, reduce this thing. So thank you so much for the, the hard work and, and the detail of the work that you're doing. Thank you, thank you. I also did wanna give you guys an update on the schools because that has been on everybody's minds um, as the school is about to open. We received 119 blueprints as of today um, and 93 of those blueprints have been reviewed. So that's about 80%. Um, they were supposed to all be turned in by the 17th of August. So that was just last week. Um, uh, those who have submitted um, their blueprints will receive their letters of attestation probably by the end of this week. Um, and most are opting for the online comprehensive distance learning because av as of now, or as when they submitted their blueprints, some of them did them a few weeks ago, um, we're not meeting the, the school metrics that were set forth by OHA. So I um, just wanted to let you guys know that's where we were with schools. Um, and that we are still working on contracts, you know, with our partners, I said, to increase testing, but also to uh, increase vaccine distribution. Um, that's important to us for the winter season as we come up with flu. Um, we'll try and partner with groups so that we can distribute uh, flu vaccine or COVID-19 vaccine if it becomes available. So. Great. I think, uh, go ahead. I think one other thing um, uh, worth uh, noting is the, um, in our office here, Chad led a, I think it was Chad led a uh, stuffing party, I want to call it, to, uh, um, to put kits together for masks um, and handed them to the sheriff. I don't know how many, Jan, a thousand uh, to our sheriff when they're out, they can educate and hand out masks. And uh, for those that are watching, I think we need to continue to, to talk about these, the, the cases that we're finding, it's not coming out of the salon or the restaurant majority of these are coming from social gatherings family living situations uh, i use the example and um, i've been you know even though i live up at detroit lake and i'm on the lake quite a bit i i kind of stayed to my own little boat but people that are out there with 12 boats tied together that's the type of thing that we're we're i have to educate people to be very very careful as they're doing that so um i think that was a good project and those are the types of things that I think our community partners can help with, uh, et cetera, to, to get the word out. So thanks for supplying us the supplies to do that. Melissa, before you leave, I have three things. First of all, that number you gave is wrong. It wasn't 1,000 because they gave me one of the packets. So it's 999 because it's been noted I'm not probably washing these, but I'm afraid the beaver colors will fade. And... But on a series... I do have two serious ones, uh, a comment on the school metrics, just I'll say it out loud, those metrics were made so nobody could accomplish them, so there could be no schools, uh, in spite of uh, uh, people coming up with innovative ways to uh, at least make sure some are educated, so I'm not happy about that. But I just want to say on the record, not an object, a subject that we've talked about, I just see it and I'm worried about it. Uh, article about the governor looking to release from the prisons about 400 people and I just want to say for the record now any attempt to put non-Marion County residents in any of our resources will be highly resisted it's probably not one of their their thoughts but don't even think about it that's all Fine. thank you so much thank you for your time